and gentlemen, how many well, welcome to welcome to Apartment Music 48 with our special guest, Little, Little Theodore. Yeah! Denver! All right, so when he told us to bend over and grab our ankles because he had to look up our assholes with a flashlight, I thought, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> After what we had just gone through, I figured... No problem, we'll do it. The strange thing is, about three hours before this, we had also had to bend over and grab our ankles so we could look, so a different government official could look up our assholes with flashlights. But I thought, hey, it's okay. <laughs> so I don't know what I had been thinking, but one evening, I was sitting at home, I had been smoking a lot of pot, and I thought, let's do something impulsive. So I called up my friend, Wally, who lived a few uh, blocks away, and I said, we need an adventure, let's go. Yeah. He says, what are we going to do? I said, just pick me up, and you'll find out. <laughs> so anyway, Wally picked me up about 15 minutes later. Now, this was the middle of the winter in Indiana, in Indianapolis. He said, okay, okay, where are we going? Where are we going? I said, we're going to Canada. He, goes, he says, we are. I said, yes, we are going <laughs> to Canada. All right. So we were, we were in our full regalia with hats similar to this, but we had like wings on them, you know, kind of like Mercury, right? And I still had the price tag on mine because that's when I was in my Hunter Thompson phase. And I thought that was cool to still have the price tag on my hat. So we drove all the way to Canada. I think it was probably near Detroit. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, they led us on through, but when we got over to the Canadian side, the guy said, okay, we want you to get out of the vehicle. And I thought, fuck. So I took my pipe, which was in my pocket, and my quarter ounce bag, <laughs> and like an <laughs> asshole, I threw them under the seat. <laughs> Instead of keeping them on me, I thought, I think, you know. So anyway, we went on in. They had us sit down. They had us sit over in this holding area, and they told us, look, don't move. It's like, well, we're not going anywhere. So anyway, about 10 minutes later, the official comes back, and he says, well, we found some marijuana and some paraphernalia in your car. We need you to come into this room because we want to look up your assholes with flashlights and make sure you're not transporting any more drugs into Canada, which is illegal. It was illegal in 1980. Mm -hmm. So they did that. We went into the next room and they had us pull our trousers down and the guy put on the rubber gloves very ceremoniously and officiously and looked up our assholes to see if we had any more drugs. <laughs> and then he told us, okay, I want you guys to go back to that uh, retaining area over there and we'll talk to you in a little while. And I said, what's gonna happen to us? He says, well, it is a criminal offense to bring marijuana into Canada. You could go to Canadian prison for seven years. <laughs> And Wally and I looked at each other thinking about what the next seven years was going to be like and what we were going to tell our folks. <laughs> so we sat there and we waited. We looked at each other periodically and we were thinking about what that was going to be like. Well, after about three hours of sitting there worrying and fidgeting and thinking about our assholes, <laughs> they came back and they said, well, we're going to let you go. You're not care you didn't bring enough marijuana into Canada for us to keep you. And so we're going to let you go back. We're like, wow, what the fuck? Good. So we got in our car and they said, when you, we want you to drive back over to the American side and we want you to pull in and go talk to the officials over there. <laughs> A catch. And we thought, okay, that's what we'll do. We'll do whatever you say. So we were like trembling, but like thankful that they were gonna let us go. So we got back over to the American side 
the official who we had talked to earlier, who had let us go on to the Canadian side, he was waiting for us, <laughs> standing there like this, waiting for us. He says, come on inside here with me, fellas. And he took us back to this examining room, and he says, I want you to bend over, <laughs> pull your pants down, bend over, I'm going to look up your assholes with flashlights. We said, we said, he just did that back on the Canadian side. He says, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> so we did what he told us to do, and as he's looking up our assholes with flashlights, he says, humiliating, isn't it? <laughs> I thought, yeah, it's pretty humiliating, but, you know, five or six hours later, I was at home in my bed, safe and not in a Canadian prison for seven years, worrying about the state of my asshole any further. <laughs> and that is my story. Yeah. Or an American prison. Thank you very much.